Today, we become legends. All right, it's time for the final class alignment chart. Today, we're going to be doing Hunters. I've already done all the other four classes in Smite, the Warriors, Assassins, Mages, and Guardians. So if you want to take a look at those, there's a playlist on my channel. And yeah, we're going to be finishing off with Hunters today. If this is your first time watching one of my alignment charts, they're a bit different to your normal kind of tier list video, although they're a similar kind of style. Basically, we have these two axes here. The horizontal axis is early game and late game. So if you're placed further on the left of the horizontal, you're more early game. If you're placed further on the right of the horizontal, you're more late game. And then the Y axis here is ability based auto attack so closer to the bottom you're more auto attack based and do more damage with auto attacks and more towards the top you're more ability based you hit your abilities you do big damage and probably most importantly for this tier list than any of the ones I've done so far, these are all relative. If I place a hunter in the early game category, it doesn't mean they're an early game god, it just means they're early game for a hunter. Because obviously all hunters are pretty late game, so I'm going to have to put some in the early game category, even though like they're not early game relative to the entire roster, but they're early game relative to hunters. And the same goes for ability based and auto attack. Obviously hunters are generally going to lean more auto attack, but some are ability based. So yeah, let's just jump straight in with AMC, who is... Kind of a little bit of a hybrid, but leans more auto attack base for sure. You know, his hives are very good for that. Uh, hunters in general are going to lean more auto attack base, but he does hit quite hard with abilities. You know, you go trans on him, you can go in mid and stuff like that. Swarm and Stinger hit quite hard if you go full ability base. So we won't put him all the way down towards auto attacks. We'll put him like there or so. And then in terms of early late game, I feel like AMC is generally like a, a little bit of an early game skew god. Has very good wave clear, very good poking in lane, does a lot of damage early, but late game he's a little bit hard to work, you know, keeping hives up, no CC immune ultimate, like you can get dived quite easily, so I'd definitely say he's more of like an early game god, but we'll drop him like there or something. Uh, Artemis, uh, straight up auto attack late game, right? I mean, her abilities do something, mostly Tusky. Uh, the traps do a little bit as well, but she's like very heavily auto attack based and very heavily late game. She's probably like one of the most, if not the most late game hunter, so uh, I'll probably have to put her like right near the edge here, and then and she's definitely like very strongly auto attack based. Kurnanos, mostly auto attack based. You know, his ultimate is nice. His two can hit kind of hard, but like his one relies on autos. His three is mostly a dash. His passive is autos. Like he's generally more of an auto attack god, more so than AMC for sure. But obviously not much of, of like likes of Artemis and things like that. In terms of early late, Kurnanos is kind of like an all-rounder in regards to hunters. He has some early game, you know, some decent poke, okay, wave clear, ultimate's very impactful for, like, late game team fights, and obviously late game he's just gonna hold left click on people with his, with his, uh, with his one and stuff like that, so I'd say he probably skews, like, a little bit more late game, but really not much. Somewhere around there is probably fine for CERN. Uh, we have Chiron, one of the more ability-based hunters. His autos can do stuff, but, like, you know, his 1-2 combo, or just, like, auto-attacking people and 2-ing them, his ult hits very hard. Like, he's, he's generally a more ability-based god, one of the ones you actually do build trans on regularly. And then I feel like Chiron's early game, I don't know, I could be wrong with this, but I feel like he kind of has, like, very strong wave clear since they made the 1, like, mark for the 2 now. You just 1-2 the wave and it's just gone, like, completely gone. Like, he has very strong early game. Like, a lot of ability-based burst damage as well. Ability-based generally is going to be more early game. Uh, whereas, like, auto attack generally is going to be more late game. I, I would say Karen is somewhere in this ability based early category, somewhere around there, probably. Uh, we have Cupid, kind of a hybrid, honestly. Like, his one and, and his ult obviously hit insanely hard, but then he definitely does work with auto attacks as well. You know, he needs autos to stack the passive, gets a passive attack speed boost from, uh, I believe it's his dash as you rank it up. So, like, not fully ability-based, more ability, uh, more auto-attack-based than Chiron, that's for sure. To be honest, maybe he's just, like, right in the middle. Cupid can get away with doing both, absolutely. And then in terms of early late game, I feel like Cupid's a bit more late. You know, you want to get your dash fully ranked up for the attack speed steroid. You want to, like, have your ult for big impact in team fights and things like that. But he can still compete early, especially with the buff to Heart Bomb they did, like, a little while back, where it, like, does way more damage to the wave now. That makes him, like, a lot more viable for, for kind of early game strategy. So I won't put him too far late. But uh, probably more late than Cernan or so, I would say. So about that. Heemdalia, interesting one. Uh, kind of a little bit of a hybrid as well. You know, his, his two hits fairly hard, but mostly he's good for that, like, AA cancel you can do with it. The one hits pretty hard. The ult hits insanely hard. But uh, he can also truck with auto attacks, like, no problem. Especially since he has uh, the, the cleave and stuff like that and, like, the more powerful auto attack on the end of his chain. But to be honest, I think he's about as hybrid as Cupid. You know, probably right in the middle. And then I feel like Haim has a lot of early game. He's kind of an all-rounder, so I won't put him too early game, because uh, it can definitely be useful at all stages, I would say, with him, with him Dillia. But in terms of Hunters in general, I would say he's a little bit skewed early game. Uh, Hu Yi... Hmm. Probably skews a little bit ability based, but kind of hybrid. You know, he, he can just put his mark on people, stun them, and just auto them down for sure. But like, you know, his, his triple bounces, his all, even his jump can be used for like extra ability damage and stuff like that. Uh, so he definitely can handle the ability-based side of things as well. Probably skews a little bit more towards that direction, I would say, relative to other hunters. And then Hui, I feel like, really comes online in the mid-game. 
So it'll probably be somewhere around the middle. I'd say probably skews late, though. His early game isn't amazing. His wave clear is not very good with uh, just, like, ricochet until you get it, like, quite high ranked. You know, you often have to ricochet and, like, either auto the wave a lot or jump on the wave as well, which is quite risky. So wave clear, not amazing. Boxing, not too great until you level up um, Mark of the Golden Crow and stuff like that. So we'll skew him a little bit late game. Probably... Somewhere around there, just next to Cupid. Uh, he's an army, so auto attack early game. She she can hit kind of hard with abilities, so I won't put a fully auto attack. You know, her two and her ult do hit quite hard. Uh, but she's definitely very early game. Like, he's an army is just like bodies the delaying because like she doesn't even have to use abilities to clear really you just told w and left click on the wave and it dies so like she's definitely a very good kind of early game god she's probably one of the most early game hunters so i'll make sure to put her quite far over and then yeah i would say she leans auto attack but can use abilities competently probably to a similar level of amc so we'll put her like on, on that level uh medusa Ability-based early game somewhere in here. You know, she has pretty solid wave clear, very good poke in the lane, like very high burst damage, like quite early on. The ult as well, uh, very good, like kind of early to mid game. But you know, can kind of compete in team fights. She's not like super early game, but is she more early game than AMC? They're probably about the same, I would say, but she's more ability-based than AMC, that's for sure. Like her one is very nice, but it's also like a lot of ability damage, to be fair. Uh, from like her two and her ultimate and stuff like that. I'd say she's slightly more ability-based than AMC, but not by too much. So we'll put her like that, but just like because her attack speed steroid is like a lot of ability damage on the steroid itself. And the attack speed buff only lasts for like three autos, whereas like stuff like AMC can have attack speed buffs lasting uh, as long as they want really with, uh, you know, hives and things like that. Uh, we have Rama, late game auto attack, somewhere in this kind of realm. He does have a little bit of early game, you know, his clear is okay if, if you manage your astral hours correctly. And he does have a little bit of ability damage, you know, Rama Snipes always going to hit a lot harder if you have, like, a Transcendence or whatever in your build. But for the most part, he likes his auto attacks, you know, big attack speed steroid, very good with the bow builds right now. Like, he's, he definitely leans more auto attack, probably somewhere in the middle of, uh, Cernanos and Artemis here. We'll drop him, like, there. And then, in terms of late game, he's definitely not more late than Artemis, but he is more late than Cupid. He's probably somewhere around, like, here, I would say, in terms of late game with Rama. He definitely wants to kind of get to that late game where, like, he's got his full build online, like, popping a steroid and, and sniping people and things like that. Scardy, ability-based early game. Somewhere around the realm of Medusa, you know, can do stuff with autos, but she's really mostly ability-based. You know, you just put the dog on people, you warn them, and then you ult when the dog gets low. That's kind of Scardy's general game plan. But, you know, she can obviously hit with autos. She's a hunter in, in, in that kind of respect. So somewhere around Medusa. Is she more early than Medusa? She probably is by like a little bit and she's more ability based that's for sure is she more ability based than chiron though that's definitely an interesting one i'd say she probably is like only slightly though so we'll drop her like there uh ula another ability based one Ula's kind of interesting i feel like he's more like mid to late game with ula you know you really want to be kind of like mid game not necessarily late game with ula because like uh full burst ula is an amazing late game even though you can transition into like just an attack speed build with like kin size and stuff like that i feel like ula really pops off in the mid game when his axe combo is like literally 90 percenting people that's when ula is like his strongest so we'll put him like somewhere around the middle maybe slightly skewed early because he can struggle a bit in those like game team fights like i said also no cc immune ultimate is a bit rough um, and then in terms of ability base, he's like purely ability, basically. He's probably the most ability based hunter, I would say. Uh, Jibalanke, auto attack late game, for sure. Relies pretty much solely on auto attacks in team fights. You know, early to mid game, the two and the three hit pretty hard, but once you get late game, you're really just bowling and ulting and autoing people, using the two for a slow for all, like more auto damage, basically. So like by the time you get to late game, he's very auto attack based, but he can do stuff with, with abilities. He's more ability based than like Rama, I would say. Probably on a very similar level to uh, Cernanos. And then late game, more late game than Rama? Probably, I would say. Only by a bit, though. Not as late game as Artemis. We'll drop him like that. Uh, Chernobog, very zoomed in Chernobog for some reason. <laughs> Don't know why he's like, it's only his head and everyone else is like a full card art. Very strange. Probably like some kind of import issue. Uh, Chernobog is like pretty hybrid, but mostly auto attack, like kind of leans auto attack. You know, is, is 1-2 combo or 2-1 combo, I don't play Chernobog, I don't actually know which of his abilities are which. I get the 2 and the 1 confused, but the one where you put down the shard and explode it, that can hit pretty hard for sure. Uh, but like, you know, his ultimate is dash and mostly to keep him safe, and then he has that passive where he gets like bonus damage every 3 autos or whatever it is. So I'd say he leans auto attack, but isn't like super heavily reliant on it. And then early late game with Chernobog's weird. He feels like an all-rounder kind of performer, but maybe like slightly stronger late. But he can push like very aggressive rotations with his ultimate and his ability burst is like solid early game. Maybe I'll just put him right in the middle actually. And then we'll, we'll put him like there or something. 
uh, on her, so slightly ability based, but can definitely do still do stuff with auto attacks, that's for sure. You know, you can just kind of like play a bit around your CC just to, as a way of landing more auto attacks. You know, you pillar and pale and get a few autos in and stuff like that. Or you can go more ability based, you know, just make your two and your ult hit super hard and then you're pretty much good to go. But you know, fa fairly ability based. Ar around here is probably good for him, like slightly less ability based than Chiron, I would say, with Anha. And then he's quite early game. He's like early to mid game, so maybe like somewhere around where Chiron is actually. We'll put him like here or something. Like Anha can kind of compete late game, but uh, his, his early game like burst damage is, is very strong. He's kind of a bit of a lame bully. Uh, Apollo, so pretty much solely auto attack based. You know, I mean his one and his ult kind of do damage, especially if you stand in the ult for the full duration, but mostly he's looking to be an auto attack character, Apollo. On a similar level to Ram, I would say. And then um, in terms of early late game, it's kind of like Chernobog in that like he can make those aggressive plays with his ult and stuff like that, but I feel like Apollo definitely does skew more late game. You know, he's looking to get his full auto attacks online, get those builds going, and then, like, you know, maybe try and do some split pushing or, like, you know, fight and then recall and then come back to the fight with Zolt and stuff like that. Uh, probably somewhere around here, I would say. Charybdis, interesting one. New god. People haven't fully figured her out yet, I wouldn't say, but she seems to be leaning a lot more auto attack based on her, um... A passive and stuff like that. You know, being able to like double proc each other is just disgusting and, and stuff like that. So I'd say she probably leans more auto attack, but you know, you can't deny how hard her ult hits as an ability, which is why I'm pu not putting her like fully auto attack. Uh, same with her two. Her two actually does hit surprisingly hard, but she does she does mostly lean autos. Uh, early late game, she's kind of OP, so she feels like she's strong everywhere. I don't really know. I feel like she is more late game though, like, so I'll, I'll put her here for now, but the Carib displacement is a little questionable because she's not been out that long as of the recording of this video. Uh, Danza Burrow, definitely an all-rounder in terms of early late. I feel like Danza just performs all the time, and whether that's because he's a bit strong or because, like, that's his general design, but it feels like he just performs very well, like, all stages, basically. And then he's probably kind of hybrid ability auto attacks as well, to be fair. His ult hits very hard, you know, the, the CC on his jug and stuff is very nice. But then, you know, he does still, like, auto attack a fair bit. Maybe he leans slightly ability based. But I'm not, I'm not a Danza expert. This could be completely wrong, to be honest. Uh, we have Jingwei, so pretty much solely auto attack base. You know, the ult does decent damage, but sometimes you use that for running away anyway. The one is like, yeah, whatever. She's mostly like, you know, pop those two attacks, be steroids and go ham. Uh, and then early late, she's mostly late, but like she does have like early game in the sense of like, she's very safe early and can just farm up, but she doesn't really want to fight too much early. We'll probably put her around a similar area of Apollo. And then finally we have Neath. Uh, clearly wasn't in alphabetical order. I don't know what order these were even in because uh, Neath's last, that makes no sense. Uh, but Neath is more ability based, but can do stuff with autos, especially the change they did to her too, where it like debuffs attack speed more now and I think buffs her attack speed as well. She can like box out a little bit with other hunters, but she's one of the more ability based hunters, that's for sure. She's probably on the level of Chiron, I would say, or maybe slightly more auto attack than Chiron. Yeah, it's, it's debatable. It depends how you build her. You know, if you're going Neath mid with like full ability damage, obviously she's very ability based, but she's a little flexible. So we'll leave her like here. And then early late game, she's more early to be fair. You force fights with her all over like gold furies and stuff. She has very strong wave clear, good ability damage early. We'll drop her like that. And so you can see a general trend of, you know, um, auto attack gods are more late game and ability based gods are more early game because you're kind of sloping down across the screen here. We've seen this in, in a fair few of my alignment charts. It kind of like presents the general trend of what the class is about. Uh, but yeah, that'll be the final class uh, alignment chart. I'm going to be moving on to the item alignment charts now. So if you've enjoyed this series and you've watched any of them, uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel so you can catch when my item alignment chart comes out. Or it, it won't be one actually, it'll be multiple. I'll be doing uh, physical damage items, magical damage items, and then either just tank items or tank items and bruiser items. So separate the ones like shifter shield, void shield, uh, runic shield, all that kind of stuff. Uh, sledge, you know, all, all that stuff where like you're building them in a bruiser build. I could separate those out into their own video, or I could just do all the defensive items in like one video. So let me know how, how you feel about that, whether I should do it into uh, four videos or three videos. But yeah, that'll be it from me. I'll catch you guys in another one later on. Have a great day and peace out, you nerds.